Gehenna in Bible prophecy. Gehenna, a term with deep biblical significance, is shrouded in mystery and often misunderstood. This valley, also known as the Valley of Hinnon, plays a fundamental role in biblical prophecy. In this study, we explore the diverse aspects of Gehinnon in the context of the Bible, its connection to the Valley of Jehoshaphat and its role in prophetic events. The concept of Gehinnah is often linked to passages in the New Testament, particularly in the teachings of Jesus. However, its origins can be traced back to the Hebrew Bible, where it is connected to the Valley of Hinnon. See the book of Joshua, chapter 15 and verse 8. Joshua, chapter 18 and verse 16. This valley surrounded ancient Jerusalem from the west and south. See Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 13 and chapter 11 and verse 30. And it plays an important role in the prophetic account. In ancient times, the Valley of Hinnon held a dark reputation as a place of idolatrous practices, including child sacrifice to pagan deities. See the second book of Kings, chapter 23 and verse 10, second Chronicles, chapter 28 and verse 3, and chapter 33 and verse 6. In the book of Jeremiah, Gehenna is associated with the valley where Judah's apostate kings offered sacrifices to false gods. Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 31. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 27 serves as a fundamental verse stating, Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, however it's important to clarify that we do not face judgment immediately after death, as indicated in Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 39 and 40, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses 13 to 18. Instead, judgment follows after the resurrection of the dead, underscoring the importance of the resurrection. Not everyone will experience resurrection, only those responsible for their actions will face judgment. Aedes, the grave, and the immortality of the soul. The concept of Gehenna is closely tied to the understanding of Shehal or Aedes in the Bible. Shehal is often translated as the grave and is a place where the souls of the deceased reside. The Bible does not support the idea of an immortal soul. Instead, it teaches that souls can die. The idea that Shehal or Aedes represents the grave is affirmed by verses like Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verses 5 to 10. See also Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4 and Psalm 146 verses 3 and 4 and Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verses 18 to 21 indicating that the soul is not immortal. This aligns with the belief that resurrection is necessary for judgment. Souls destroyed in Gehenna. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, this passage emphasizes that one should not fear those who can only arm the body, but rather fear the one who can bring destruction to both the body and the soul in Gehenna. This statement challenges the notion of the immortal soul as it implies that both the soul and body can be destroyed in the same place, namely Gehenna, which was historically a garbage dump outside Jerusalem. The Greek word psyche, often translated as soul in this context, can also be understood as life. When examined alongside passages like 
Matthew 16 and verse 25 where psyche is translated as life the context suggests that life may be a more appropriate interpretation for soul in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. This passage strongly asserts that the soul is not inerrantly immortal but can unquestionably face destruction. It is worth noting that the Greek word Strong's 622 translated as destroy in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 carries the meaning of destroy utterly rather than merely afflicting or tormenting. This word is consistently used in the Bible to signify complete destruction with no implication of ongoing torment. If we were to replace life with immortal soul in this passage, it would indeed lead to a conflicting and contradictory interpretation. Instead, the passage seems to convey a clear and emphatic message that the soul, like the body, is mortal and subject to destruction in Gehenna. Psalm 49 emphasising knowledge and understanding. Psalm 49 and verse 20 emphasises the importance of knowledge and understanding in relation to accountability. It likens those who lack understanding to beasts that perish, highlighting the role of knowledge in bearing responsibility for the truth. This understanding is also reflected in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 14 which speaks of the deceased not rising emphasizing the mortal nature of human souls in the context of the judgment seat of christ and gehenna having the knowledge of god's truth and living by it is essential for accountability daniel 12 resurrection and judgment the key passage in understanding the resurrection and judgment associated with Gehenna is Daniel 12. It mentions many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. The word many implies that not all will be resurrected but a select group. This indicates that not everyone will be resurrected and the judgment will indifferent between the righteous and the wicked. The marriage feast of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ. The events associated with the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage feast of the Lamb are critical elements of end time prophecies. The judgment seat is where individuals are evaluated for their actions and receive their rewards. The marriage feast of the Lamb follows the judgment seat, signifying the moment when individuals are made immortal. These events are often viewed as occurring alongside the Great Tribulation and the time of Jacob's trouble. The Great Tribulation and the time of Jacob's trouble, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 21 and Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7 are frequently cited in Bible prophecy discussions. The Great Tribulation is described as a period of intense suffering and testing for humanity. The time of Jacob's trouble is associated with distress faced by the Jewish people. These tribulations are believed to lead to the War of Armageddon, which is expected to have global consequences. Gehenna in the Hebrew prophets. Jeremiah's account in chapter 7 and verse 31 and chapter 19 verses 11 to 13 both describe moments of divine disapproval and foretell the eventual destruction of Jerusalem. The verses in Jeremiah chapter 19 and verses 2 to 6 prophetically address the ruin brought by the Babylonians and later by the Romans in 70 AD.
However, looking ahead to the last days, once the echoes of past sieges and consequences of divine judgment and earthquakes have transformed the very landscape, the whole of the valley, including the areas where lifeless bodies and ashes were once discarded, stretching as far as the Kidron Brook, up to the corner of the Horse Gate on the east side, will be only consecrated to Yahweh, as described in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 40. This foresees a remarkable transformation and divine sanctification of this historical significant place as evolved into a significant concept in the prophetic teachings of Jesus. It serves as a potent symbol in its historical context as a place of punishment and in its future role as a literal site of judgment. Also, Gehenna carries deep symbolic meanings. One critical aspect is its representation of the second death. In contrast to the concept of an immortal soul, the term second death signifies complete annihilation, representing an irreversible and everlasting termination of life rather than a mere separation from God. Gehenna in the Gospels. When Jesus mentioned Gehenna, he was clearly referring to a physical place of judgment. This clarity is particularly evident in the context of the Gospels where the term Gehenna consistently points to the actual valley of Hinnon. Furthermore, in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 36 and chapter 24 and verse 34, Jesus foretold that all these things would come upon this generation. The term generation here incorporates those living in the first century AD and also those dwelling in the last days. This prediction is intimately tied to the judgment prophecies outlined in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13 and Luke 21 which ultimately found their fulfilment in the cataclysmic events of 70 AD, resulting in the destruction of Jerusalem and the Sadducees in the first century AD. The historical records, notably those of Josephus, align with Jesus' warnings. They describe how the Roman army discarded the dead bodies of the people into the valleys surrounding the city. Jesus' prophecy, particularly in Luke chapter 21 and verses 20 to 24, accurately depicted the encircling of Jerusalem by foreign armies, its eventual trampling by Gentiles and the devastating outcome. These events, therefore, foreshadow the impending and tragic downfall of Jerusalem, a vision also prophesied in Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, which is yet to come to pass in the future. Nevertheless, these occurrences of Gehenna are not limited to the past, but hold prophetic significance for the future. They shed light on the understanding that Gehenna is not merely a place for the disposal of dead bodies, but a significant site of future judgment and punishment for the wicked, Jesus constantly contrasted entering the kingdom of heaven, which represents new life in the future earthly kingdom of God, with entering Gehenna. This contrast supports the interpretation that Gehenna represents divine end time judgments. Jesus' stern warning to the scribes and Pharisees serves as a prophetic message with implications extending far beyond their time. It is relevant not only to those particular religious leaders of ancient Israel, but also to the antitype of today, church leaders, as described in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 13, the church leaders of today are symbolized by the beast, 
the false prophet and the image of the beast. The fate of these individuals and the organizations they represent and also representing those who lead people astray and engage in falsehood is a clear reminder of the ongoing relevance of Jesus's warning. In Revelation chapter 19 and verses 19 to 21 a vision unfolds that old circling parallels to Jesus's teachings regarding Gehenna. The lake of fire described here is unmistakably Gehenna as it is foretold judgment is coming upon these deceivers and they too will be cast into the lake of fire which is Gehenna. The combination of these biblical references from the Gospels to the book of Revelation underscores that Gehenna is not a concept bound by historical context alone. Instead, it signifies a future judgment, the second death, which is eternal and represents a total annihilation of existence. This prophetic dimension highlights Gehenna's significance for both the past and the future as a place of ultimate judgment and punishment in the age to come. Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the wheat and tars, a lot of day application to the second coming and judgment. Reading from Matthew chapter 13 verses 42 and 43, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gashing of teeth. The parable of the wheat and tars found in Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30 has several elements that strongly suggest a latter day application, particularly in the context of the second coming and judgment. Here are some of the key points. The harvest the reference to the harvest, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 39, is a figure used in other passages concerning the Lord's return, such as Isaiah chapter 18 verses 4 and 5, Joel chapter 3 verse 13, Mark chapter 4 and verse 29, and Revelation chapter 14 and verse 15. This suggests a connection to the events of the second coming. The end of the age. The mention of the end of the age, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 39, allies with, aligns with the concept of the end of times and the return of Christ. Angels gathering the responsible, the idea of angels gathering the responsible, Matthew chapter 13 and verses 39 and 40 is also repeated in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31 to 33. In the context of the second coming, further supporting a latter day application, a furnace of fire, Gehenna, the reference to a furnace of fire. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 42, which is associated with Gehenna, aligns with the concept of judgment and the fate of the wicked. Wailing and gnashing of teeth, the phrase wailing and gnashing of teeth, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 42, is used in other passages concerning the fate of the rejected at the judgment seat. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12 and 20 and Matthew chapter 22 and verse 13 Matthew chapter 24 and verse 51 and chapter 25 and verse 30 this connects the parable to the judgment of the wicked the righteous shining forth the statement then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father Matthew chapter 13 and verse 43 appears to fit more sensibly with the second coming than with the events of 70 AD.